it's already had an impact on the number of calls. Patients are not spending as long on the floor. It's easy. You know, that, that's the bottom line. Mid and South Essex approached us because there were a number of key issues that they were looking to address. Evidence would suggest that 45% of falls within care homes result in an ambulance call out. And historically, care homes are very likely to use the hoist to lift a fallen person. That's widely recognised as quite a daunting method, particularly for someone that's just had a fall and anxiety, higher anxiety than, than maybe normal. You would find that carers would prefer to call the ambulance service um, if they found difficulty getting a hoist into a room, having to move furniture, beds, etc. The big hoist was really scary for someone that just had a fall, obviously, with this big metal frame coming down on them. Um, so yeah, and then we'd get them back up. Otherwise, we'd, if we weren't too sure, we'd obviously have to call the ambulance crew out to, um, to get them up or check them over. And so therefore we found that staff were calling the ambulance on a continuous and regular basis really. These patients um, having what we would class as a long line. With a long line, it, you know, we've got increased likelihood that they do actually need to go into hospital. Mm -hmm. We've also got the, the risk that while they're on the floor, um, you know, them becoming unwell, the development of um, pressure ulcers and skin breakdown which can actually have long-lasting impact. We know that people that have fallen, that have been on the floor for a long time, that are then being taken up to the hospital, that they often need then um, more um, interventions. They're then being admitted onto hospital wards and we know through that then we've got an increased likelihood of deconditioning um, and actually then having more complex needs um, complex needs around their discharge and getting, getting people at home and then needing additional support in the community. We did a bit of an exploration into the lifting gear that's available um, and a bit of an options appraisal really. So the uh, reason why I like the, the razor chair is because it, it, it sort of, you build it around the person, it doesn't involve uh, having to move the person too much to be able to put them on it um, and so we thought well, we'll we'll try a little test and learn study. We worked with Min South Essex to really identify what they were trying to achieve with this project and supported them with a pilot with 70 care homes. As with all projects the implementation and the delivery is absolutely critical and given that we decided that we would go around to every individual care home and deliver a personalised training session to a Razor Champion. We also supported the newly qualified Razor Champion with a training video which they could then use to cascade the training to other members of the care staff to ensure that the whole team, every care member within the care home was fully confident and competent on the use of the Razor Chair to help lift their fallen residents. We've done that in partnership with Fell Gaines who have supported the, the training, the videos um, and also any sort of data monitoring has been supported by them, been really helpful um, and also in partnership with our community nursing services, the care home support teams have been on board with this. What was really interesting was the impact that it had in such a short period of time. Month on month, at least for the past eight months, we have had a reduction in calling emergency services. Therefore, it's had an impact on uh, freeing up ambulances to attend elsewhere. It's freed up capacity from the ambulance service that they're not being called out. And equally, we haven't got lots of front uh, door attendances at the hospital that historically would have been the case with, before we had this project in place. The staff involved in those are actually feeling much more empowered and much more uh, confident in their ability to move those patients and get them up. So after the pilot had been live for a number of weeks, 
we decided that we would go to a number of the care homes that have been issued the Razor Chair to understand some feedback and monitor the impact that the Razor Chair was having on the care that they were delivering to their residents. Here's what a few of them had to say. The staff, it gives them confidence to use the chair and also for the residents, it's that peace of mind that if they do fall over, we have a very handy piece of kit in the building to be able to use and get them off the floor. Yeah. It takes that stress off of that person. So for us, as a care home, I think it's really beneficial that we have the razor chair. A lot of residents, when you bring a hoist down to them after having a fall, are quite scared of a hoist over the top of them and the sling being put around them and all the manoeuvring, whereas with the razor chair, as long as you know that resident's safe, it's two bits of backboard that clip underneath them, put the legs in and it just totally mobilises them up. It's made the efforts a lot easier, the number of call outs to paramedics a lot, lot less. It has been a really good bit of equipment. Prior to its use, we were calling out the ambulance service probably about five times a month. However, now that we have raised a chair, we've noted that calling on the ambulance services and taking an ambulance out of the emergency role is probably down to once every other month. System-wide, uh, there's been greater levels of engagement, so we've had good sort of uh, collaborations with our community provider, um, supporting their CAMs, all the CAMs individually, they're all private businesses, but they're all sort of increasingly on board now. The CCGs uh, and local authorities are cited on that as well, and, and the ambulance service as well. So it's, it's, it's been a real drawing together of services. You know, we, we have reduced um, ambulance attendances at, at hospital, we've reduced ambulance attendances at care homes, so there's a significant amount of uh, a reduction from that point of view alone. So, you know, from a, a system-wide basis, you know, we're as, and, and as we're heading into winter pressures, you know, that traditionally during the winter we see an increase in call-outs for uh, ambulances so hopefully this will have a, a play a part in helping to sort of reduce that flow. Financially th there are uh, advantages obviously every time somebody attends a uh, hospital, uh, A&E or whatever there is an associated cost therein so you know the, the investment in the chairs uh, is you know in just if, even if you just look in staff time and energy that they're not having to manage someone on the floor, we're not having ambulances being called out unnecessarily, we're not seeing those attendances at hospital, so that, you know that there's lots of potential savings there. In six weeks, across 48 care homes, there were 244 falls recorded. Of those, 52 were able to self-stand, 150 were got up using the razor chair, and 42 required an ambulance call-out. This means that the percentage of ambulance call-outs was reduced from the national average of 45% down to just 17%. So within this six-week period, there were 92 ambulance call-outs avoided. At an average of £252 per call-out, that's a saving of £23,184. If we then extrapolate this across all 320 care homes in Mid and South Essex, over 12 months, there would be 5,314 ambulance called outs saved. So over 12 months, this would equate to savings of over 1.3 million pounds. The way forward is technology and the razor chair to a resident compared to a hoist and sling is less daunting, it's less frightening for them and they feel more relaxed and more comfortable and at the end of the day it's about keeping your resident happy and as comfortable as you can. During you know, uh, surge periods, winter pressures, there's significant delays and actually getting there early using a razor chair and actually getting someone up early will have significant benefits so actually we should probably move to a place where the use of razor chairs, you know, and supporting our patients that have fallen and our false pathways in the community is, is, you know, everyone's business. Key learnings really is, is that um, it, it's definitely worth doing. Um, we've seen a reduction in patient harm, we've seen a reduction in ambulance call-outs. 
Um, you know, so the key learning for me would be, you know, where else can we apply this and can you know expand it up across the whole ICS really. In gathering this data, it's given us the opportunity to shine a light on the really positive work that Mid and South Essex Healthcare Partnership are doing by their joined up thinking. It's proven that it's a scalable model and it's having a big impact in reducing system-wide pressure, reducing the number of ambulance call-outs and also the associated admissions and the ongoing costs that they represent. So the Razor Chair has been a significant improvement across care homes, urgent community response and care call and the impact is to A&E, is to our staff and indeed our patients, those people we serve.